Hi. That sounds pretty good. That's, that sounded like a winner. Sounded like yeah. a champ. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another episode of Res Hockey. This is episode 110. Uh, my name is Trevor. Uh, with me this week is uh, the champion, the champion, the champion. I don't know how to say champion in Spanish. Uh, he's fresh off his 40 plus old timers championship here in here in Kenora. I don't live in Kenora, but uh, Bush is with me and we have a special guest for this week. Um, we uh, we've been taking I guess we've been taking requests for uh, make a wish foundation and uh, we decided to make uh, grant a special a special someone a, a wish. So with us this week is uh, all the way from Moosonee, Ontario. My internet is your internet connection is unstable. Is that yeah, a little bit of glitchy. Am no I Starlink yet? No Starlink over there yet. Yeah, we have Starlink. Am I glitchy, Bush? <laughs> you were for a while when you're doing the intro, but not okay. right now. Hopefully, it's recorded. But yeah, this week we have a special guest with us, guest host, Mister Caden Butterfly. What's going on, man? Uh, not too much. Thanks for having me, boys. Uh, you know, I kind of teased this special guest for a little bit, so it's nice to finally get on here. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's good to have you on, and, and uh, you're used to being on the show with being a former guest. But yeah, it's uh, I like your hat. Where did you yeah. get your hat from? UConn. I went. Uh, I guess I had a coast to coast trip. The last uh, this month has been a little crazy. I think I counted 16 flights this month. I uh, went to Labrador first and played in a tournament over there with Pessimit, and then uh, went out north or I guess west northwest to uh yukon and my first time seeing mountains over there so i was just in full tourist mode over there uh the mountains is it the same as like uh alberta mountains or is it uh i haven't even seen alberta mountains so that was my first time seeing mountains ever so i was just well you must have saw mountains in thunder bay (laughs) that's a (laughs) those are uh glorified hills i think yes i think too (laughs) Like, uh, for those who are familiar with Thunder Bay, everyone knows Mount McKay, and that's more like a hill. It's not really a mountain, right? So Yeah, it's pretty I, cool out there. I played with uh, Selkirk, and, I mean, uh, what a squad. They, they I've honestly never been treated that well. I didn't pay for a single meal the whole week and showed up with, like, a, a little gift of merch. I got a sweater and a hat, and... I mean, they decked us out too on the ice. They gave us shells and CCM jerseys and all that. I mean, drill. Uh, I mean, I felt like I was playing junior again. It was nice. Where are they from? Jeez, that's I should know this. I want to say they they had to drive up there though. I I don't even know. I don't even know to be honest. I should have did my uh. I don't know. Since it's been a while home. since I since <laughs> it's been a while since I colored a map. So I have to go back to my grade ten geography days there. That's awesome. Uh, this week's guest for episode 110, he's from Wiswanapi, Quebec. He just finished playing for the Shoal Lake Flyers at the uh, North American First Nation Tournament of Champions. Our guest for this week is Shetwin Blacksmith. I always have a hard time saying his first name. It's kind Wait, of tricky. Chewy. We just call him Chewy. Chewy? We'll call, Chewy. Him, we'll call him Chewy. I think there there doesn't go like Bush and I always mention this. There's not a time in the sh- each of our shows that we get either a name wrong or a reserve wrong. I think our yeah. streaks at 110. He was actually in Labrador with me, yeah. So uh, he's a he's a gamer. I know he's pretty busy right now. Uh, we we have a little saying that business is booming right now. So he's been all over the the pro- or the country. I guess he was out in. Uh, Ontario, Labrador, and I know he's all over Quebec too. So guy's busy. I've known guys like that. Uh, like they'll work in a golf course for the summer, get their uh, EI for the winter, and just play tournaments like all all year and just travel all over, making making yeah. bank while getting your EI on top of that. Yeah, for sure. The guy's a gamer. He's playing a lot of hockey right now. Uh, shout outs. Do you guys have any shout outs for episode 110? I can't think of anything. 
Bush. Uh, yeah. I'll shout out you guys. I know you guys dedicated an episode uh, a couple episodes back to my old man there, so I really appreciate that. That's a class act for sure. You know, he's a big fan of the show. Oh yeah, it's like uh, I can't see uh, more than like anything bad about your old man. He was uh, someone special and someone I always looked up to growing up living in Moose and Moose Factory and like especially like when we used to have uh church picnics on Charles Island and he used to play ba- he used to have a baseball game between Moose Factory and Moose and, e, and he'd play for Moose and, e, and he just hit those bombs man like yeah. so always yeah. always uh for sure it was it was special to dedicate to the least we could do cuz he's always uh he's always a game time superstar man he was <laughs> Him and his heart saucers. <laughs> Ray Sauce is his nickname. Ray Sauce, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that, guys. How about you there, Bushy? I have a shout out to Trev Iserhoff. <laughs> for not getting too mad at me for not posting about my victories. I know. <laughs> okay. I know Bush. I try to tell Bush just to help him out. Like, Bush, can you post this when you're there? Post post when you're there here and there and bush doesn't uh, he's having a hard time uh with uh the social media aspect of our res hockey podcast and sometimes he gets on my nerves <laughs> the humble dude yeah he's humbled oh, oh yeah just another day in the office for this guy winning championships so <laughs> so i appreciate that for not dropping me i appreciate it Sometimes I just want to wring his neck and <laughs> shoot the or shoot the puck at him or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I forgive you, Bush. You're uh, you're still in my your good books, and you'll never be in my bad books. All kidding aside, <laughs> though, uh, like shout out to the family of uh, Ernest. You know, he did, did time this time is for that for that enough, and it's nice to see it's still going on. Did they have like a moment of silence for him or? Pretty sure they did. I I wasn't there for the opening ceremony to open the puck drop. Um, I can only imagine they did, but it's just it was weird not seeing him uh, promoted arena. and at the arena and uh, presenting the 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 championship prizes. Yeah, that must have been totally different. And yeah, I was thinking about that this weekend while I was in Winnipeg, and yeah, it's always uh, different when someone's not at a tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, there was there was. Four four big tournaments this week this past weekend. Oh. Uh, one was Tribal Days in Winnipeg. Uh, you got the Pre Freddy in Prince Albert. You got uh, North American in Kenora. There was uh, where else? There was one in BC. Um, where else was there? Should have did my homework. Um, and there was one in Wendake, Wendak, Wendake, Wendaki, in- Wendaki. See, yeah. I knew it. There we go. The streak's alive <laughs> in Quebec. So, Jeez, where I is that? Be, I might be messing that one up too. I think isn't that near? I could be completely wrong, but I think it's near Three Rivers. Okay, somewhere around that area. W e n d a k e. I could be butchering that too. Honestly, I Wendake? could be saying it like an Ontario Wendake? guy. So. Wendake? Wendock? I don't know. I apologize. <laughs> there was a tournament there as well, and. Our friends, uh, El Super Took Oilers won that one. Oh, nice. And, yeah, and they had uh, Roddy Ross in that from Saskatchewan. So that's pretty cool that uh, Roddy went way over uh, to Quebec to play with us. That was a pretty pretty good pickup. Did you ever play against Roddy in any tournaments? No, not yet. I haven't been able to, uh, to witness that. But I know, uh, I mean, our goalie, Brad went head to head with him that one year, and when he played for Eagle Lake, oh yeah, and then yeah. Uh, they finished that out in a shootout. Which I mean, that still still bugs Brad to this day that it went to a shootout. Does it? But yeah, especially he, he hates shootouts. Especially having a championship game like a national championship yeah. game, and it goes down to a shootout. Yeah, for sure. B- Bush Bush and I have a friend who's a shootout specialist, and. <laughs> I don't know. Bush, poor Bush, just it torments Bush. Just just the way this guy shoots and <laughs> right, Bush? Yeah, it's uh it's a rather unique style. It's although I think he I think he was filled with uh 
with your uh, suggestions. I think I messed up his head like when I told him <laughs> he had one way he was going to shoot and I told him how to shoot, like what to do because there was so much snow on the ice and I told him, don't deke, just shoot because if you deke with all that snow, you'll mess up and it kind of so messed with his head and he totally did the opposite of what I said and he didn't score. He took about so, 15, 15 strides from the blue line to the goal to the hash marks and then he shot. Well, uh, just I think, fast. Yeah, poor guy. But yeah, uh, Tribal Days was this weekend in Winnipeg. Uh, for that, Norway, Norway House Bruins won the the Open. Uh, who won the Who won the Nietzsche? I think it was the Nietzsche division. Damn it, I'm drawing a blank. Who won that division? Bush was it Norway in the Nietzsche division. Nori was yeah, Nori was in a Nietzsche division then uh or I'm Googling it. No, I'm you Facebook at Tribal Days. I'm just drawing a blank. Uh hey, Pegwis. Pegwis won the the play for your own reserve. Cross Lake Islanders came in second and OCN Winterhawks in third. Then Peg Norway House won the Nietzsche Pegwis Mean Machine, second in Lane Stars and third place. So that was that was good. I, that's the tournament I played in um this past weekend, and that was a really good tournament. Um what else? How'd you do? I didn't see any in any uh championship photos uh, there. We shit the bed, man. With that <laughs> tournament, you uh Two losses and you're out. And oh, right. double knockout. Was, eh? Yeah, double knockout, and we only played two games. <laughs> we had a good team. Like we played the the champs, Canoe League Young Guns or Old Guns. Um, we were tied going into the second, the third round, and the third period. I mean, sorry, and they just turned it up and they beat us ten five. Our, our goalie wasn't that good. He was letting a lot of easy goals. And the thing is, they call well, we had another goalie as a backup, and his name was Chris Medicine, probably one of the best goalies to come out of this area. And for some reason, they didn't play him. They really? sat him on the really? bench. Jeez, I. He's questionable. Uh, questionable. Yeah. So, like, why would you set a guy like Chris Medicine on the bench and let a guy who's letting easy goals in? But it is what it is. And but yeah, I only played two games and. Good thing they still paid us money though, so I was happy with that. It's oh, always good when you get paid, trip. Yeah, it's always good when you still get paid in old timers. <laughs> so, how much was, did you get paid, Bush? Just three hundred. A <laughs> hundred a goal, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See how humble Bush is. <laughs> bonuses. He's not even Bonus, bragging about yeah. his bonuses. So yeah, it was a good tournament. It was a good turnout. A lot of people. They uh, it was at the what is it? Sports for Kids or Hockey for Kids Arena? I think they always change their names that arena. Um, it was a lot of people. Unfortunately, there was a scary incident where a man showed a gun that he had a gun outside the arena, and people got pepper sprayed in that area and it was all because of a u9 protest what you messed up <laughs> it's u9 it's kids hockey and you're upset about it i mean it must be a good reason why they had to protest but it's the parents fault for knowing knowing if they're i don't know what their situation was but it's kind of stupid <laughs> To pull a gun, it was uh, Saturday night around nine thirty, and I was I wasn't at the I left the rink already, but I was getting messages that people were just running in the dress rooms and running away from the front door entrance because someone had a gun, and and, that, and I saw people. That, uh, Facebook. that reminds me of Ottawa, Piscat a couple of years back when we went up there. They the they had cops in the stands with like assault rifles around their shoulders, <laughs> went on, and we kept playing. And we ended up winning the tournament, but they were at every exit and guys were in the room thinking like, like what if the, the shooter did come, you know, like we were on the ice, like, where are you going to hide when you're on the ice? <laughs> That's true though. Like, Yeah. But they kept it going. 
thankfully I think we took a pretty good person on that time. I know one guy in our the old timers league that Bush and I played in, he went for it was uh, their game was about to start. It was at the wreck and they the one guy went into the bathroom to go take a pregame dump and the last guy in the dress room locked the door on him and he was so paranoid. He's like, Yeah, I was just sitting there taking a dump and I tried to open the door later and I was locked out and I was so scared. Like, what if there was a fire and I would have been just locked in and while well, everyone else was running out of the arena. <laughs> <laughs> so it, eh? it, it was pretty funny. It was uh, Marksy's dad, Bush. Oh, <laughs> jeez. I'd probably be like the one of the scariest moments, like incidents too. Like you're locked yeah. in a hockey dressing room. Like, what if something happens? Like, what if there's a fire? It's, it's, that's why those free game dumps, you got to time them perfectly and not take yeah. one when everyone's yeah. leaving the dressing room. Probably turn into a couple pregame dumps, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the North American, Bush, talk about the North American this weekend. North American was good. Um, everybody, the, the talk of the tournament was a rumor that uh, Jordan Tutu was uh, going to be there because Reno Cameron posted a meme like he met him he met Tutu at some point uh during the weekend or whatever during the weekend at some kind of conference so arm and arm posted him and then he posted uh on friday he said rumor has a tutu's playing for Rankin inlet so the rec center saw sunday championship numbers on a friday on afternoon a friday. <laughs> it was funny <laughs> but but everybody came to see Rankin play eagle lake and everybody came to see Rankin. Uh, beat Eagle Lake. It was a pretty phenomenal. They're pretty fast. And they're I was talking to, yeah, they're they're fast as well. And I was talking to one of the guys from Eagle Lake the weekend before Dryden, and they said they're kind of they don't know how to play ranking this this time because they're used to hitting them instead of uh, instead of just skating in an open hockey. Especially but a it was rink like that. Yeah, it was it was good to see everybody was. Wow, that two that uh, actually Tutu's cousin was playing, but it's really good. Like they're fast. Like Sholay kept up with them for the first cup for the first period. That was a good, and then they rank and warm down, and then rank rank and had their way with Eagle Lake, probably five four nothing, four nothing, four nothing. That doesn't yeah. happen too often. No, but it was it was timing though, because uh, Nate Briere wasn't there because he had to go coach for uh, uh, the. The, the junior team. Oh, right. Yeah. No Troy either, eh? No, no Troy. Troy no. He's making bank in Winnipeg. Yeah. Business so, is booming for Troy right now, that's for yep. sure. So, yeah, two, two of the big guns for uh, Eagle Lake not there to control the play and calm the boys down. They just rank and just had their way with them. So, uh, what happened with uh, you this weekend? Well, you know, this show is about res hockey, and I just don't, don't <laughs> want to talk about <laughs> I want to say for the first time ever in 28, in the, actually in the history of this tournament, I've been playing since probably 93, 94. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I was on a team that won the A side in the 40th and over. This felt nice because I played with my cousin Tiny um, for the first time. I bet you in about 15 years, and it was nice to win one with him. When it was, uh, the, the time was counting down, were you just getting. Were you just shaking, just full of ner- your nerves, or just shot? Ah, uh, I was on the ice. I was. We were. We were almost killing a penalty. It was just. It felt like it, because they had their pull. They pulled their man. They pulled their goalie. So it was six on five, and by then we had just. We were just on the last shift and just gassed, and it's like three, two, one, and then I heard the buzzer. Just kind of put my arms up and just started right. crying. Yes, they're <laughs> crying. <laughs> Took a knee. <laughs> Did you throw your gloves in the air? No, I wasn't that. You should. I was, I was, I was too tired. <laughs> so you're like the Ray Bark of Nish hockey, right? Yeah. Did they lift you up like like Rudy, like, like Ray Bark? Uh, she, uh, she. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to bring you back down to earth, there, Bush. I was born in '95, so. You've been going at it for All since right. 93, uh, I think you said. I'm going to block this guy right now. <laughs> Mute. <laughs> so you're a Sunday champion. I'm a, I'm a Sunday man. Sunday champ. Yeah. 
That's pretty uh, congratulations. <laughs> that's that's awesome. So are you gonna play next year or are you gonna retire a champ? Well, I'll think about uh retiring a champ. Might as well. <laughs> Go on bigger, top. Yeah, finish on top. Leave on a high note like George Costanza. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was in a pool. I was in the pool. <laughs> Uh, the last, uh, hey, we did. We said Rankin Inlet was going to win that tournament. We did. We predicted it. Yeah, we predicted that. And we said yeah. they would beat Eagle they Lake in the finals. Yeah. Damn, Jeez. we're good, man. We should have put Crystal some money Ball. on that. Yeah. We should do that next next big tournament yeah. we go to. Just start taking bets and walk around like a bookkeeper. Like a bookie. A bookie. A bookie. Yeah, that's a bookkeeper. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. <laughs> And we'll give odds. Yeah. Two to one, three to one. You should, man. That's probably good money. Uh, the last tournament to, to mention was the pre tourney for the Chiefs Thunderstick tournament in Prince Albert. Uh, the Round Lake Bears came on top. They did, they defeated PBC and Stars along uh, placements, went to Beardy, Beardy Senior Blackhawks and LaRange 89ers. So, that round out the top four. It was uh, they went Facebook Live on a lot of their games, and that's really good hockey out there. That those uh, Saskatchewan teams. I mean, I think right now for hotbeds, Manitoba and Saskatchewan are they're pretty much on top of everyone compared to like all the other provinces. What do you you guys? What do you think Saskatchewan and Manitoba are so? Superior, superior compared to the other provinces and reserves throughout Canada. Jeez, I don't know activity. I guess it seems like there's a tournament going on every week over there. I think they're born into it. Yeah, because if you think about it, like you get the Norway House, like cross yeah. legs, they always have minor hockey's from like right when they're little, right? Do you have really good minor hockey programs and? Though, like the northern Manitoba uh reserves all have junior B team. Well, most there's a junior B loop up there, so kids are always skating and always playing hockey. So, that I say that's a big factor as well. Like, you have to start them when they're young, right? And it it's all those reserves have arenas, so but yeah, there's something must be something in the water with Saskatchewan, Manitoba. <laughs> Sure. So, I think uh, I think a lot of uh, other reserves like Ontario, Quebec. Well, Quebec has a good hockey uh, minor hockey system too, right? Yeah, they have like the Cree Nation Bears that I think like all the communities kind of come into one team and they travel and play in like I think it's Double A over there, but um, it's it's a pretty good league and I mean it gets kids used to that travel and all that that you see in junior, so start some young. But I, I know some guys from BC, they want to start almost like a discussion group where they want to see how they can make BC hockey better. Um, Because I think there's a little bit, I don't want to say a concern, but just it's not at the same level as the the prairie, prairie provinces. So I think a lot of, I mean, a lot of reserves have to start from, from what's the first one? Timbits. Yeah, I think. Timbits. Well, U U seven now. Yeah, U sevens, but I think it has to. Everyone has to work together as a team, like parents, chief and council, and and the community members, right? So to be successful, to have good teams, so it uh, should be interesting. But yeah. Those uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan teams are really uh, kicking some bum what? butts, buttocks. Mm -mm, how do you sure. say bum? How do you say bum in a Jibway bush? Jeet. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's serious. <laughs> Is it? Jeet. Yeah. Jeet. 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 No. Really? Replace the, the P uh, like a Jeep jerky. Jeep. Replace Jeet. it with a T. Jeet. Oh, I thought you said Jeet. 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 Yeah. Jeet. What's Jeet. it in Cree, Trev? That's a good question. 
I want to say, is it Gajisk? I could be saying something I have else, my, though. I'm kind of a little scared to say that. <laughs> I have my Moose Cree uh, dictionary somewhere around here. I gotta look that up. <laughs> I was getting taught Cree when I was working at the hospital by like elders, so they could have been just throwing words at me to just repeat to to embarrass <laughs> me, really. So I think it's Gajisk, but I could be wrong there. Uh, well, we're okay. We'll uh, take off soon to go to our interview with uh, Chewy, but when we're uh, on our little break there, I'll uh, go get my dictionary and I'll go look it up. Hope I'm right. <laughs> I could be way off on that one, to be honest. Okay, we're going to uh, head over to our interview with uh, Chew Blacksmith right now. So let's go. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to the episode <laughs> 110. Trevor put me on the spot here to do the intro, but uh, we got my buddy all the way from Swanapee, Quebec here. We got Chewy Blacksmith. Thanks for coming on, Chewy. Hey, what's going on? And what's up, Cater? Surprised to see you here. Yeah, <laughs> my make-a-wish. They granted me my make-a-wish, so here I am. Here we go. <laughs> how, was, uh, how was golf today? Uh, golf was uh, just as I expected, not good. A lot of slices. But, uh, my first day, a lot of a lot of snowmans on my scorecard. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I didn't even bother with my overall scorecard. Uh, my overall score at the end, sorry. <laughs> um, this past weekend you were in Kenora playing for the Shoal Lake Flyers at uh, at the Tournament of the Champions. Uh, how was your weekend playing with Show Lake? Oh, it, not, it was a good time there. Uh, the team. Gave me the great hospitality. Uh, all the boys were uh, a bunch of beauties, like always. And um, but other than that, I have nothing but good things to say there. The, the hotel was right across the street from the rink, so I couldn't expect anything uh, closer, or better hospitality, I should say. Did they bring you to the chip truck fries? Oh, I didn't. I didn't no. get a chance oh. to go there. <laughs> Before my game, though, my coach Sheldon ended up going like twice. Before. I'm like, <laughs> just uh, just a rub in the face there. They are that good. Yeah, I uh, uh, I, yeah. I work for Show Lake, uh, Show Lake Forty, where Sheldon's from, and I work at the band office. And today was like like a special stat day. This is, I think, the highest they ever placed. Day eh, Bush. Yeah. Ever. So everyone was just excited at the band office. It was like uh, everyone was just excited and pumped that you guys just uh, did so well this weekend. Oh, I had no idea about that, but I wish we did better, to be honest with you. Uh, Bush's second home during uh, after 9 o'clock is Shooters. Did you, uh, <laughs> did you make an appearance at Shoots this weekend? I did not make an appearance at Shoots this weekend. I, I was going to... You would have saw I Bush gonna, there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, but like I was too gassed on my uh, flight, and the night after, I was like too out of shape for my game. I'm like, nah, I don't deserve to go out. <laughs> <laughs> How many they must games? not sell Guinness at uh, Shooters Edge. Yeah, you? yeah I'm a big Guinness guy. I don't know if I'm allowed to show uh, if I'm sipping on it. <laughs> oh, you're you're the you're fancy type, eh? Yeah, Bush Guinness. Just- well, Bush is sitting there drinking Luckies. <laughs> <laughs> best of the best. Um, how did you uh, get started in hockey? Uh, well, growing up, I had four older brothers, first of all, and they all played hockey. So hockey pretty much ran in the family. And uh, originally, I didn't like it, but uh, I began at the age of seven, I think. Uh, I started with the Valdor Tournament. Played my first game there, and uh, at the age, I think it was Novus or pre Novus maybe. But uh, I played one game there, scored one goal, and uh, I remember my aunt waved at me from the crowd, waved at her back, just fell in love from the game. Ever since my first game, and uh, never looked back. I'll take this next question because okay. I spent some time with you in Sudbury. So uh, how was your move to Sudbury? How did you like that transition from the res? Uh, it was Sudbury. My transition was pretty good. Um, my mom and one of my bros was there. Uh, hockey in school kept me busy. So that helped. But uh, definitely was some 
hard times, but it was definitely worth it in the end. I think my cousin. A lot of Indians in Sudbury. Eh? I think my cousin played yeah, for yeah, that yeah. Sudbury team. There was uh, quite a few of us uh, when I was there. There was uh, a lot of Moose Factory lads, and uh, I, I think the person that set the tone for Sudbury was Burn, and I wanted to go there too because of that guy. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was there a chump kid on your team when you played in Sudbury? Yeah, Riley Chum. Yeah, that's my cousin. Yeah. And there was Dakota Rubin, Dakota Red Sky. Uh, hopefully, I'm not missing anyone. Duncan Stewart. Uh, he's from Espanola area, I believe. But there was quite a few of us uh, niche guys on the team, I guess you could say. You spent a few seasons with the Canadian International Hockey Academy. How was your experience there? Yeah, so after my time in Sudbury, so I was in grade four to grade nine. And then from grade 10 to grade 12, I was at Canadian International Hockey Academy. And my time there, I have nothing but good things to say there as well, because I was on the ice every day. And I, I think it really excelled my game, too. I took my game to another level. And uh, that's how like my, my game took off, I think, because of that school. Schooling was there. Teachers... Uh, if you had to struggle, if you're struggling in school, they help you out. And uh, yeah, the, it's a student athlete program from the from the beginning. And uh, yeah, CIH does well with that for sure. Your last year at the academy, you uh, you finished the season with the Barry Colts. How did how how did that that all uh, come about? So yeah, my grade twelve year. I had the opportunity to actually play Gloucester Rangers in the CCHL or go back to Midget Triple A. And I decided to go finish my high school diploma at CIH. And uh, I once I went back, Carl, Gloucester Rangers called uh, called me up for a few games. I did well there. And a couple of Midget Junior teams noticed. And then I went to a big nickel tournament with CIH Academy. And that's where I caught eye of the assistant general manager of the Barry Colts. And uh, he invited me to a tryout like in the beginning of November. And uh, I, I won for three skates. And uh, that's where I met uh, Dale Howarchuk. And uh, the GM was Dave Drinkle. And uh, he invited, I went there. They let me go after three skates. But after two weeks, two weeks later, they invited me to sign. So I was like, but that's where I met Dell. He told me, we'll keep an eye on you. We'll keep in touch. And then two weeks later, I got a phone call from Dell and he says, we want to sign you. How was it playing for the late Dale Howard, Chuck? Oh, it was pretty cool, to be honest. Like anything he said, anything he, he still did on the ice, we had our undivided attention for sure. <laughs> uh, he, he loved to jump in on our, uh, like our school game, as we call it. And he still had games. Like, so when we had school, when I was in grade 12, I was in Barry, and uh, some guys would have school, so we wouldn't have that morning skate where the guys get to, like, shinny in, and uh, they do, like, morning skate practice, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the evening practices on Monday and Tuesday, we would have a school game at the end, and Dale Howard Chuck would run that, and he would bring just the guys, and, like, the guys would try to jump in, the guys that were in the morning, but Dale would be like, no, nope, just the school guys. Dale would run the show on those games. Still, still have the IQ, the hands. I don't know. He had it all still at the time. He just loved the game that guy. After Barry, uh, you played with the Olympics. Was there much difference between the O and the Q? I think it was just, I was a younger in the O, I would say, 17. Uh, didn't really have much prior like gym experience. And I was, feel like people were much stronger. But going to my 18-year-old year, I went to the gym. Like, I had a full summer of training. And uh, I felt that I, – I personally thought I was just younger, though, and it was more stronger and faster. But um, I don't know. I think both leagues are just, just as equal. Like, it's tough skill-wise, physicality-wise. I remember every time I had tried having my puck, I had, like, no time with the puck to do anything. I would just chip it out and do, like, the simple – stuff as much as I could but uh as, as I got older I knew I felt like I had more time so I just felt like the older you get maybe uh I don't know maybe less I don't know what the word I'm trying to find here but 
the more comfortable you are, I guess. Oh, in yeah. The league. yeah, that's the right word. <laughs> of all the rings that you played junior in, um, have it be in the O or the Q, what was your favorite ring to play in? Uh, I heard London is pretty sick. I, unfortunately, I never got to play there. Uh, but they played in our barn a bunch of times. But I think the sickest ring personally would be Quebec City Ramparts. Quebec Ramparts. And uh, they had that new, brand new rink, like year one, oh, maybe year two. And uh, the first round of playoffs, we played against them in my 18 year old year. And I, I, we didn't, we played them four, two times in their barn. And I was held bomb for those two games. But I managed to like see the whole rink from the like the box upstairs, and it, it was just insane. Like that rink was like an NHL rink for a junior team. Who's the best player you played in junior? We need some uh, name drops here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, I played against uh, McJesus for one game and Health Bomb for one game against him. So it was a uh, an away game. I was Health Bomb for that. And uh, he, they had like a seven five game. They won seven five. He had like four points. And then the following game, like maybe a month later, they won two nothing in our barn. I wasn't supposed to play that game. Something went down, and then I got a last minute call. I was warming up regardless, but uh, something went down, and I played. But I played minimal shifts. But I was on the ice with McDavid at one point. But that's the only time I ever played against him. And uh, I played against like Marner, Max Domi. Uh, I don't know. That's but McDavid would be the only guy I could that obviously that'd be the best I played against. I went to uh, Erie's main camp and like his speed on the ice is just like out of this world. Eh? It's like indescribable. Yeah. Oh my god. I think he was he got tripped right going towards our bench. He got up like with instantly and still had the puck with like oh, that was <laughs> stupid. He was just looking at him like he was a god skinned by our bench already <laughs> as a seventeen year old. <laughs> After junior, you went to Carleton University. How was the yeah. transition from junior hockey to youth sports? Uh, transition, I would say the players were just more mature. Uh, like playing against, I felt like I was playing against more like men once I went to youth sports. And then rather than junior, you got like 16, 17 year olds still who haven't matured. But I think that's the biggest difference is maturity. Uh, the skill's still there. The speed is all still there. It's just guys, like the first liners all probably went pro and all the fourth liners. It's all the second and third liners of CHLers, I would say, <laughs> in new sports almost. And then the ju top junior players. But, like, yeah, it's definitely still high tempo. But only difference, I would say, is maturity. What did you study when you went to school? I took criminology and – uh just over halfway done that degree, but uh, it was uh, during my fourth year or my third year was when COVID hit and it was online schooling. So I had to do like Zoom, like what we're doing now. And I, <laughs> I did not attend uh, any classes and I started failing and I thought like I needed a break from schooling. So I, then I went to uh, Sweden my fourth year. It would have been my fourth year at Carleton, but I wasn't eligible because of my, my third year I was failing. So I ended up going to Sweden my, uh, when I was 24. So it would have been fourth year at Carlton. But uh, if I want to go back, I could. It's always an option. What city? I was just in Gothenburg over oh, the holidays. Oh, I was in uh, Groms, a small little town right beside Karlstad. Okay. Yeah, yeah so uh, I went to Gothenburg, you said? Or Go Gothenburg, yeah. Gothenburg, yeah. I think I went there for a day. Just uh, a little train ride there and back, but nice little spot. The the Indian came out in Bush when he went to Sweden last last December. Of all the damn restaurants <laughs> you could eat in Sweden, the guy went to KFC. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe so, yeah. Uh, did you receive any funding from your band to uh, help set offset the college life? Oh yeah. So uh when we go when we get approved for schooling in uh university or college, we get monthly allowance. On top of that, they get uh, they pay it for our schooling. So yeah, like that's actually there's no reason I see like no reason not to go to school for us crease. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. 
but yeah, we do get a monthly allowance and uh, they pay for our schooling. Up. I remember back in the day, like in oh. the nineties, like the Cree board education board used to give like big box, like for monthly allowances. Was it still like that for you guys? Cause I know like when I was with uh, like Moose Cree, we only got like nine, like nine seventy five a month to go to school. So it's not it's not much. You, you can't live yeah. off nine seventy five. Yeah, like I think mine was like close to two grand, but now yeah. it's like close to like it's up there now. Yeah, like now, CSB. Go, now you guys are now, spoiled with CSB. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Go back to school because of that. It's, it's like, it just keeps going up. Isn't can't you get uh you get s- some type of number if you have relatives like like past that generation that number. Piece, I think. I'm pretty huh? sure it's not my expertise. <laughs> you know, Kaylin, you can get like, a beneficiary number. Yeah, yes, like I, I can. Uh, uh, I think my granny was in Esau or something, so I can go and live in. Like I got an uncle in Wasponope there, I can go and live with for six months and get that CSB money. But Moose Cree was only <laughs> getting. Uh, I think I was getting twelve hundred a month, and my rent was thirteen. So I had to get a part time job when I was when I was in uh, when I was at Laurentian. So I remember my dad telling me that that I could move. Up. I think it was. Uh, Sesame, that I could move up there because we had relatives up eyes uh-huh. Ross up there, and that if we wanted to get that number, we'd have to live up there for like six months. Never did, but but yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, workers back home for if you work for up to six months, you can like even play with these tournaments, uh, these class A tournaments, class B, class C. Yeah, that's a that's a loophole. Eh? Yeah, there's a loophole there. Even if you're not native. Yeah. yeah, we used to get whacked by the Chiefs back in the day because they had like a goalie coach living in the community or <laughs> something. He was a stud. So that was a kind of a kind of a piss off now. But I mean, we got Dauber in that now, so yeah. that's a bit of a cheat coach. <laughs> yeah, Dauber's mass. So, like, would that if you guys wanted to take a team to the Freddy, like, could Chief and Council sign a letter? Stating that he's part of the community and he wouldn't be count, counted as an import, or is that just like in Quebec? Just in Quebec, yeah. Just in Quebec, yeah. Just, yeah. Imagine if you guys Maybe could find a loop. If you guys could find a yeah. loophole for the Freddy for that one, shit, you have so many guys just coming to live in there's, the swamp. There's a couple guys that are half, so like their moms from one res and their dads from one res, and they can kind of help like both ter- uh, teams, I guess. Essentially, there's also the baby mama rule in Quebec yeah. now too. It's just like some KZ guys playing for <laughs> Wiscaganish because he's been living in community for X amount of months. So yeah, that is the baby true. mama rule is in effect over there too. Bush, there's still a chance for you, man. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a side champion. I don't know. You know? <laughs> Dreams do come true. Yeah. <laughs> um. You mentioned you're in Sweden. You played a year there. How was how was it there? I'm curious because I was there too. Uh, it was good. <laughs> uh, just there was still kind of COVID restrictions there. Over here, there was like quite a like a lot of COVID restrictions in Canada. But uh, I think it was a good time. I liked the hockey there. The rink was nice, like wide ice. Um, the guys I met was nice. Uh, Carl said. We would go over coffee every day. I think my main thing was when I was in Sweden, I would go for black coffee when, like once a day at least. And that, that was my go-to. And But other than that, I don't know. I don't know. Just I like the white ice, though, for sure. <laughs> that <laughs> explains the... the Guinness, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the Guinness. There you go. Uh, when I was there, um, their coffee was like three times as strong. Did you? Did you have yeah. a yeah okay so it wasn't just me then <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I had to experiment here and there yeah I was there for Christmas too and they love their seafood for Christmas I'm not yeah. a seafood guy Kaden yeah. are you a seafood guy? no it's funny I'll how do I'll sushi like... but I'm, I'm doing like yam too. rolls like I'm doing yeah, the, the phony sushi rolls I'm not a I'm not a seafood guy 
must be a Cree a, thing because I'm not a seafood guy either. And like, yeah. well, someone asked me, like, how come you don't like sushi or like shrimp? It's like, well, we never grew up with it. Like, it wasn't yeah. part of our uh, our meal plan growing up as kids, right? So, <laughs> you don't get shrimp in Moose Factory in Moose City. <laughs> uh, you suited up for the Watertown Wolves here. How was it playing in the Fed? I think it was a cool experience. Uh, playing organized hockey again it was nice. Uh, gave me the drive that I needed, I think, to want to play potentially a higher league next year. Uh, but yeah, other than that, meeting all those guys, meeting the coaches, uh, the fans, nothing but good things to say there. Uh, yeah, especially the, the, the boys on the team, they all made me feel like welcome right off the bat. And but yeah, not my good things to say one of my time there. Was that guy, uh, that goalie, Trout for Oilers, that's on YouTube? Was he there when you were there? Yeah, he was uh, my stallmate actually. The first two weeks before he got, uh, it was actually it gets more crazier than that, I guess. Uh, the Fed was kind of wild. He got like cut within two weeks for <laughs> off ice issues or something, off ice shit. <laughs> you know, he had issues with our starting goalie, and I don't know, blah blah blah. Long story short, he got traded. I uh, I watch all his videos on YouTube, so it's yeah. he's a he's a pretty funny character. That kid. yeah, yeah, he's a he's a nice little fella for sure. I got a bit of a preview on your Snapchat of what a day in the life is, but uh, let's uh, let these guys know what a day in the life is as a pro player here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not 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 much actually. It's just a lot of relaxing. Uh, you wake up. Head to the rink, uh, practice. After practice, we have like a good hour workout at uh, Planet Fitness. And then once you're done there, you're literally set in stone for the rest of the day. And this is like probably one thirty. So like our practices are at nine a.m. No, we gotta be at the rink at nine. Practice are at ten. So like by two p.m., you're all free, free, ready to go for the rest of the day. You can go get some grub. Uh, and then just chill out the rest of the day, watch some hockey, have some brews, et cetera. <laughs> Free game meal? Uh, no, not much. Uh, not really specific, but I would like pasta. Um, definitely it has to be like three hours or more. I can't be anything sooner. Otherwise, it's coming back out. But, but pasta would be my go-to. I would love a good sub for sure. And, uh, what is no, the no. best? What is the best subs in the in the U.S.? Isn't there like uh, Subway and uh, we had, we, had, uh, we had J Rec J Rec subs, and that was I thought that was pretty elite, better than Subway I would say. And uh, we called we thought it was Drek or something, but it was J Rec. So. <laughs> Yeah, we thought it was one word, but they really emphasized the J. But yeah, I think that's the go-to place for my sub for sure. Are you uh, are you superstitious? Like you dress a certain way with your hockey equipment, or tape your stick a certain way? Are you one of those players? I don't, I don't know if that's like superstitious, but yeah, I have a certain way of getting dressed. But it's not really. I don't have to do it like that way every time, you know. But. No, I don't think I really have a superstition. What do you think, Cater? No, he's he's just a little stitious, this guy. He, <laughs> he, just, he just shows up. <laughs> he just shows up. <laughs> Maybe a Guinness, eh? That's mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, what's your favorite part about playing in Raz tourneys? Meeting new people, I guess. So you get to meet a lot of fellas from around Canada. Uh, like show like those guys on the team are all beauties. And then... I get to the I get to play the press summit at Moose Factory, uh, Aquasasni. I helped them before too. In Norway House. So it's just it's nice meeting people from all the uh, like all around cast across Canada and building connections. I guess too. I guess the envelope helps too, eh? <laughs> that doesn't. <laughs> that definitely helps. I guess. Okay, I got a question. Would you play for a team that's really good? And they have a really good chance of winning. And if they win, they'll pay you a good amount. But oh, at, at first, they won't pay a little. Like they won't pay you too much. Or would you pay 
play for a team that pays you lots at the beginning, but they really don't have a chance of winning the championship. They don't have a chance. Yeah. I don't mind a little and the chance uh, and championship. That's yeah, always that's, nice. Yeah. That's, but, uh, yeah. that's a good answer. Yeah. He's a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what turn what tourney's uh next for you this weekend uh there's one in low so it's like 30 minutes from here it's just a little uh tournament with i don't even know what kind of tournament it is but it's like 800 dollar prize pot so it's not much at all it's just i'll, I'll know more by the end of the weekend but uh, apparently there's one in Manitoba, too, that I might be going to, but we'll see about that. That's the Brent Wilson? Yeah, I'm messaging Wilson. my buddy Wyatt Noski. I don't know if you guys know him. He's, I'm keeping in talk, uh, contact with him right now. So we'll see. What about He's the... a beauty. I went to hit the ice with him. He's he's a beauty. Yeah, man. He was my roommate my first year at Carlton. All right. On. What, what about the Freddy... Uh... Yeah, uh, next month, who uh, decided who you're gonna suit up for yet, or can you say? Oh, I can. Uh, I can say. Uh, <laughs> Nor- Noria House took care of me last year, so I thought I'd go back with them and run it back. We lost mm-hmm. in the semis last year against yeah. Cross Lake, so hopefully we can do better than that this year. How do you feel about that, Kate? About him playing for uh, Norway House? Beauties, man! So yeah. It's just a bunch of beauties in that room, honestly. So uh Hopefully wish them the deal. best. Yeah, Hopefully I mean deal with me and Cater. Yeah, free agent right now. I got a couple yeah. options. Yeah. So it'd be nice to go with a buddy, that's for sure. Your package agent deals to, are always best. Your agent has to step up his game, I guess. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I am agent, my agent. <laughs> I got a couple different agents here working on it. So I don't wanna I don't want to deal with those stressors. Yeah. Pass it off to you guys. <laughs> Uh, what advice would you give young players uh, who uh, who have that opportunity to move away like you did at a young age and want to want to p- pursue their uh, hockey career playing AAA and move up the ladder? Uh, yeah, you senior right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I would just say uh, keep grinding. Uh, hockey has just given me so much, like ever since I was a kid. Uh, just never give up. You will not regret like what the opportunities hockey will bring you and the people you will meet, and uh, all the experiences you will go through because of hockey. Right on. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> before we go, you have now reached this point where we have to ask you. You're obligated to answer as quick <laughs> as you can, like fire rapid oh. questions. All right. Oh, fuck. The five rapid niche questions that we ask all our guests. All right, here we go. Baked or fried bannock? Pardon? I can't hear you. Baked or fried bannock? Fried. So, uh, keep going. Baked or fried bannock? You said fried. Said fried. You said fried? Yeah. You yeah. said fried. Hmm. I don't know. Is that, is that wrong? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next. Have you ever used a curtain? A bed ever sheet used a, a bed sheet or... for a curtain yeah. or a door? Oh yeah, in, right in Watertown. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Uh, question number three: Ever see Ernest Munias live in concert? I don't believe I have. <laughs> Better put that on your bucket list. Okay. Uh, question number four: Indian taco or Bannock burger? burger? I love an Indian taco. Uh, fifth and last question: Can you jig? I can jig. <laughs> <laughs> After a few of those uh, yeah. cold batteries, eh? <laughs> Couple Guinnesses. Yeah, I can confirm he can jig. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, question about jigging. Quebec jigging and like Manitoba jigging are totally different, right? You guys ever see Manitoba jigging? Oh, I don't know. What is it? I'll I'll send you a video. I you never okay. see you never seen like gotta be a direct private. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, it's totally different jigging, you guys. <laughs> well, uh, I'll send you some videos and you guys can confirm. And sure. Maybe we're in, when we're all in Saskatoon, we can just maybe put on a show or something, show those oh, Western yeah. Crees how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Chew, you gotta send these guys the video of your you losing your checklets there. Oh yeah. You gotta bump I'll those views it, a little bit. Okay, it sounds good. That's quite the vid. You guys will love that one. Three weeks ago. Oh. Yeah, that happened in Labrador. Yeah. Just driving this guy to a dentist on Sunday in Labrador, just wishing, wishing to get that fixed. How <laughs> is Labrador? Like what kind of, is it like a just a regular town or geez, I think we are in Goose Bay, so it's uh I can compare it to like a Timmins, Ontario, I guess. Oh, just Timmins? in the middle yeah. of like hills. Yeah. yeah. Nothing too crazy. But the the res was like 30 minutes away. And I could compare that to cash, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, yeah. It did give me cash vibes. Yeah, Chewie's been to cash with the, oh, the yeah, factory you? team. So <laughs> he went up for the 30K. That was uh Probably the easiest 30k you can win. It's 50k <laughs> next year, so I'm gonna lock Chewy in for an import. That's wild. Uh, yeah, I can't 50K wait. 50k in cash. Yeah, it was canceled this year, so they bumped it to 50 next year. So, jeez, wasn't like old timers high up there too in cash? Yeah, they bumped up everything. Wow, oh, unreal. Okay. <laughs> Let's go, old timers. Right. <laughs> I'll throw Bush's name out there. Yeah, he's the real in a room. Yeah, let's give him one of these. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, man. Thanks for uh joining us on the show. Thanks for uh, uh anytime, taking time and to come hang out with us. We appreciate it. Anytime, thanks for having me. All right, we'll uh talk to you again, man. Go ahead. Hurry. Hi, <laughs> welcome back from our interview. Um I'm just trying to figure it out. I have a Cree dictionary with us, and we're trying to figure out how to say arse and Cree. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a um, Cree word enough, arse. Yeah, arse. <laughs> um, I don't have my glasses with me, and I so I can't see. Uh, I don't have my old man glasses. <laughs> um, kind of kicked me in the ass because I used to tease Bush about having his old man glasses. Yeah. And, now I don't have mine and I can't karma. see. Karma. Yeah, karma. So <laughs> I have this. Uh, I think my mom gave this to me. Uh, Moose Creek came out with a dictionary. And there's like, do you have one of these, Caden? Yeah, I think mine's still in the plastic, though. <laughs> there's like over eight, 800 pages, man. 800 and... 859 pages. That's a lot of words, it. man. I gotta crack that open. That's a lot. It's pretty thick, too. That's Holy thick. Yeah. That's uh, it's pretty deadly. So maybe I should start learning. Oh, my mom sent a voice message. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll uh, figure that out. Hey, Bush, we should have like uh. A Cree word of the of the week or an Ojibwe word of the week. I'd be down with that. But it just has to be like all swears and all like insults and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Things you can use on the ice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh something maybe we should come up with. Like I'm sure like Saskatchewan Crees or like uh Alberta Crees and the all the reserves in BC should have their own slang, right? And the McMaws out west, out west, I mean, out east should have all their own <laughs> slangs and shit like that. We'll just uh, do bad word of the week. Uh, do you guys watch YouTube? Are you guys big uh, YouTubers? Yeah. YouTube golf, man. That's all I watch. I'm yeah? not even like a reality series guy anymore. Just no. YouTube golf puts me right to sleep. What about you, Bush? Don't laugh, but I watch uh, a lot of Seinfeld clips. Oh, I love Seinfeld clips. That's oh, yeah, uh, no judgment. Yeah, no judgment, man. That's those are the best. I could watch Seinfeld over and over, and just it's still funny. You gotta say that with your chest next time, Bush. <laughs> <laughs> 
Say it proud, man. Say it proud, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this week's top five. This is uh my oh. list for uh breast hockey top five uh things that I watch on YouTube. My list is pretty kind of weird, but uh I don't know why I watch <laughs> this shit on YouTube. It's kind of weird. Um, my number five, it's uh, I watch this guy. His name is Cincinnati Picker. He he goes at yard sales and he wears a GoPro. And he just all he does is go to yard sales and <laughs> or estate sales and he buys shit on uh from yard sales and I don't know why I watched that. I think it was during the pandemic when I started watching that because in the US everything was still open and Canada was pretty shut down. And <laughs> I kinda I guess you could say I enjoy going to yard sales, so I was just missing yard sales and I started watching this guy on YouTube. So check him out. Cincinnati Picker's name is uh, number four, I watch on you things I watch on YouTube is uh Casimir Kasukuso. He's a uh, goalie with the Laval Rockets. He's a pro goalie. He played like Nashville Predators and played for the Maple Leafs and their system and plays in played in Sweden a couple of years ago. Uh, he married a woman from Minnesota, so he lives in Minnesota during the off season. So he does. He's allowed to make like clips, game clips, practice clips, and. His life away from the rink, so it, it's pretty cool. He's a pretty good goalie. Uh, another one I watched number three is uh, Trav for Oilers. You guys ever hear of this guy? He's from Winnipeg. This guy's yeah. he's uh, a minor league goalie, I guess you could say, and he he's not Played really with Chewy in Watertown. Yeah, yeah. You would have saw Chewy in a couple of his beds. Yeah. He uh, he's a I don't know he's. He wants to be a pro goalie, but no one wants to keep him. Like, he played for, like, three teams in the Fed this year, and there's only six teams, so he played for half the league <laughs> in one year. And the thing is, this guy keeps, like, he'll hire, like, goalie consultants, goalie coaches to help him, like, get better. But he's, like, 28 years old, man, like, and he's still trying to live the dream. So he's uh he's a Winnipeg boy, so I watch him. Uh number two for things that I watch on YouTube, uh, is a guy named Froggy Flips. Just like it's almost like Cincinnati Picker. He goes to toy uh like Comic Cons and stuff, and he goes to toy expos and he buys vintage toys like 80s and 90s and 70s. Cause toy collection's huge nowadays. I mean, I collect toys and but yeah, this guy he, like spends so much money. Like, like he'll go to a co- a toy collection show and he'll spend like a couple G's easy, like on three toys. Oh. So, and my number one, uh, that I watch things that I watch on YouTube is a guy called Retro Rick. He's from Arkansas. He he's the same as Froggy Flips. He goes and buying the old like old toys and old Nintendo games and Sega Genesis and shit like that. I don't know. I think it's just a kid, the the kid growing up in me. We uh, growing up in Musini Moose Fashu. We, we never had toys growing up, and we we I think the we had a Nintendo growing up. I remember that, and my I remember when we were probably like really young. We had an Atari, but my mom's cousin, the late Willard Vincent, was all hammered and he pissed all over it and oh. messed up. And he ruined our Atari. <laughs> so good old red Jeez. stories that you remember as kids that just traumatize you. And that's probably like the only thing I can remember <laughs> from my childhood. <laughs> Growing Jeez. up is just uh Willard pissing on an Atari and just ruining it. I don't even know what an Atari is, to be honest. There it's like, like my uh, first station was the play place PS1, I think I had. Really? The first oh, one, shit. yeah. Did you have any game systems growing up, Bush? Yeah, I uh, had the Nintendo when first, and then I Super Nintendo. And then when I went to university, I bought myself uh, the N64. Oh, yes. I used to play 2 Arc 2 and Mario Kart. Oh, what's shit, that? Eh? I don't know. I can't remember. But 2 Arc 2 was, and then Doom came out. So those are the best. Wasn't Doom like a computer game? It was, yeah. It was on, like, PC? Yeah, PC. And then the Nintendo had it for a while, for a long time. They had the rights to it. You can only get it on the, on the Nintendo for a little bit, I think. But that's all I remember playing it on. It's really cool. 
sound effects were neat. Scary. Did N sixty four come out before the PlayStation? Yeah. I oh okay. yeah, because I had, it was I had uh, one of those two then. Sorry, I guess that would have been my first one. N sixty four, then it was the little uh GameCube. That GameCube. Oh yeah. I yeah, I remember that. with the little disc, and that's the same yeah. time when PlayStation came out. I'm not much of a gamer no more. I mean, I think I had like a Nintendo sixty four growing up in Moussini, but that was pretty much it. Like my brother was a gamer gr- growing up, but not so much me. Like I, I tried to play next uh, Xbox, but the only thing I would like playing is those NHL games where you're like the GM mode and you get to pick your team and stack your team and shit like that. That's the only one I liked. Trying to be like a GM and totally no uh, salary cap the way. Yeah, no salary cap to stack your team. <laughs> That's and when you make it. your when you make yourself up, you're like a 99. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> like six, seven, max speed. Just yeah, a giant. It's so... a way to do it. But yeah, I'm not much of a gamer no more. It's uh I don't want to get my ass kicked from my little seven year old kid playing online <laughs> who can't even speak English. Um I guess this is this is good news, I guess you can say, in a way. But uh, Capitals defenseman Ethan Bear enter, enters the NHL NHLPA player assistant program. Um, they don't go into like the uh, online news sources weren't going in too much detail on why he was entering, but um, they just said he's taking time away from away from the team. So, um. I guess you could say it's a good thing, right, guys? Because he's looking, yeah. he's asking for help, he's seeking help, and he's doing the right thing to be a better person. So I know he's getting blasted for on social media, like always. Keyboard warriors are saying a lot of negative things about him, and that he's or why he's going to. A lot of people are saying alcohol is the reason, and just calling him another drunk Indian, which is totally, completely, uh. What's the word? BS, I guess. Mm-hmm. In a way, it's really racist and totally uh, stereotyping uh, hockey players. But what do you guys think about the Ethan Bear situation? Definitely proud of the guy for going to get help. I mean, he's had some tough bounces for sure with social media and just the media in general. And, you know, that, that's, that's, I, I couldn't imagine how I would even deal with that. So, kudos to him for wanting to get help for sure yeah for asking for help for tell asking he probably talked to his wife a long time and then he realized i need help that was probably the first step though to open up to your wife and say listen oh right, something's yeah. going on something's going on with me like what what can i do how can i approach this and like then, he's he yeah. still gets a lot of backlash from that edmonton series when oh yeah edmonton lost that one series like they haven't lived that one down no it's it's really bad, like especially. I'm sure it, it to- still played a to- toll on him, like the way yeah. David and those guys treated him afterwards, right? It's almost like a Domino's effect, right? Like one thing after another, and mm-hmm. you, it all builds up, and then after that is just you keep things inside of you and let it build up, build up, yeah. and build up. So, yeah, it's good for him for getting help. I mean, it's not easy to ask for help, especially yeah. when you're a pro pro hockey player and you're living under a microscope microscope and a lot of people judge you based on your uh, on your play on the ice so uh, we wish Ethan all the best and and if you're going through something don't be don't be shy to ask for help there's a lot of people there's a lot of professional help that us us as indigenous people it's it's out there for us and I think we should take advantage of all the extra help that that uh that we have that's out there for us. So don't be shy. Sure. So I've actually, uh, yeah, I've actually gone to get some help too, since my old man passed for the first time in my life. And it's, it's done wonders for me so far. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, I think, I mean, it, it's obviously a tough situation I'm going through, but it's definitely helped just be able to talk. And, you know, I mean, you can't have those conversations with like some family members sometimes. So when you're talking with almost like a stranger, you kind of can open up more than you usually would. So I definitely, uh, 
encourage anybody to go and do that. I always kind of had that, um, I guess that stigma around it or thinking that I was weak to, you know, go and talk to somebody, but you know, I'm, I'm loving it so far. So kudos to Ethan bear. For sure, for sure, exactly. Uh, you're not you're not weak. It's I think you're a strong person when you ask for help. Um, I know it's it's that stereotype that we all grew up with that when you ask for help or you you want help, you're 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 weak. And but we're not. We're we're resilient. We've been here. We've been through a lot from our parents and our grandparents, and we're still here. And uh, So yeah, reach out for if you need help. There's a lot of help, um, I'm sure, through the Health Canada websites and through your your band office, your health unit and whatnot. So, um, and if you need someone to talk to, like uh, it's happened in the past where when we uh, mentioned that it, we're available if you need someone to talk to you or message message one of us and we'll gladly talk to you for 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it takes, just to. to help you to get your mind in, in, in the right place and help you out because I rather have you, I rather talk to you for 15, 20 minutes or whatever, than read your, uh, read if something bad happened to you, I guess you could say. Right. So sure. for sure. Same goes Um, to me too. My message box is always open and I'm always willing to talk to guys. And, you know, I have talking to guys in my community and that, and I'm always open. So feel free. Yeah, we'd rather have you, rather you uh, still be with us and be a part of our uh, Res Hockey family for sure. Anyone who's listening and anyone who's uh, who needs someone to talk to. Um, last Thursday before the busy Easter weekend, I went to the Winnipeg Jets and Las Vegas Golden Knights game. Oh, um, it was spared a moment. Um, A friend of mine, he uh, posted on Facebook, anyone want to go to the game? And I messaged like right away. I was like, we'll come. He had two uh, tickets available. It was, uh, he messaged around 4.30. So it was, we got ready. Paul and I got ready right away. We drove fast to Winnipeg and we got there around 6.30 <laughs> oh, to the yes. MTS Center. So we just. Um, it was a really good game. It was my first time seeing Zach Whitecloud play for the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, he's uh, it was cool to see him live. He, it's uh, the way he plays, he keeps it really simple. He'll just make that outlet pass and just let the forwards do the rest of the work after passing that puck. But he's uh, he's really solid. He's a big boy. He's like six three, and he, his shoulders are just square. So it was cool. It was my first time watching him play. Um, Vegas won, and he actually got the winning. Uh, he was on that winning uh, part of that winning goal. He got an assist. He was a plus two that game. So he got a lot of penalty kill minutes, which was really cool to see. But uh, those uh, Jet fans were heckling me because I wore a Vegas Golden Knights hat. And But uh, – I told Paula I should bring my Leafs jersey because when the Jets <laughs> come with a thing where uh, uh, they po post a bunch of video, like on the Jumbotron, they, they'll uh, show you if you're lost, wearing the wrong jersey. Lost soul. Or yeah, lost soul or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> they were putting like guys with Montreal jerseys and stuff like that, but and they were booing people, booing them bad. So I was like, damn, I'm wearing my Leafs jersey next game, which would be funny. So, but yeah, if you guys ever have a chance and opportunity to go watch Zach Whitecloud play, um, it's really cool. He's a, he's a stud, that guy. Plays like Bush. Reminds me of Bush, just solid. <laughs> just solid defense. Stay at home defenseman. <laughs> you said Vegas you has quite the uh, D line up, too. I mean, their oh, they decor do. is solid, eh? That Noah Hannafin, holy jeez, he makes things look so easy. Like, yeah. jeez. Just like Bush, just makes it look easy. You okay, think you they mentioned... could go back to back? Yeah. No. 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 I don't know. You mentioned Stone's that... gonna come back. Yeah, Stone's Stone. gonna come back game one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You mentioned you scored three goals this weekend, Bush. How uh, how how did you score those goals? I want to know. First one was a a tip off their stick. Just I just shot up blindly. Those are actually my goals. 
I just shot blind. There wasn't one snipe or anything like that. It's just coach always says if when in doubt, put it on that. That's it. Yeah. That's a classic veteran move right there, Bush. <laughs> So, humble, humble guy, humble guy. I would have said bar down. Yeah, I would have said, I said I would have said coast to coast, bar down, and I dangled <laughs> the other defenseman. You could have threw a Michigan in there too, Bush. I I did try to be a hero when they uh when they pulled the net. Did you ice it? Goal. I I killed off one one second off the clock when I shot the puck and iced it. <laughs> Wog just skated by, just glared at me. I just. I have to go for it. <laughs> for sure, you got to go for it, man. Yeah. You're in the championship game, man. You're <laughs> playing for 20 G's. <laughs> it felt like 20 G's to me, damn it. <laughs> All right, on. that's awesome. We're proud of you. Um, Anything else before we uh, skedaddle for the week? Nothing? You don't want to say hi to anyone, Bush? You, no one? Uh- I'm going to the Flames game Thursday. Wear your Oilers jersey. I'm going to do that. Yeah, do it. Also, I am going to do it. Especially since the Oilers beat the uh, Jets last week in, the sh- in overtime. I was there. Tuesday. OT. After they were up 3-1. to one. Sue, I love her, but she jinxed it. Oh, that's awesome. She looked, she looked at me like there's like 10 minutes left. She, she looks at me. The Oilers are going to win it. And I. I just look at her like, oh no. And the Jets pumped in two quick ones. And I was like, you know what? The two goal lead is just, it's a bad superstition. It is. <laughs> that worst two lead goal hockey. lead. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst lead in hockey. That's, that's brutal. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us for another week, guys. I re- we really appreciate you hanging out yeah. with us for an hour. Uh, thanks, Kaden, for uh, coming by and hanging out with Bush and I. You know, uh, Bush was really excited to have you on, and he uh, can relate to you now because he's a champ just like you. <laughs> right on, Bush. I got to clear something up, too. Bush said I was a CrossFitter that one episode. I do not do any CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I work out for sport. I don't work out to be the best at working out. So <laughs> not a CrossFit guy. I had to clear that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's that's too good man let's leave on a good note like that so leave on a high note. yeah okay <laughs> high note. all right guys <laughs> thanks for joining us and uh we will see you next week peace peace, peace.